So after my last video, when I was changing sockets around the house, there was quite a bit of discussion in the comments about various aspects of the electrics, and I thought, oh, I better just test this unit. I haven't tested it yet, so I come along and I'm pressing the test button, and it's not tripping, and I'm thinking, oh my god, we're not protected. And then I realise that this particular unit has got a little green button here, And the legend next to it is on and off. So I pressed it and all of a sudden I get a light next to the selected trip circuit sensitivity that I've chosen, which is this, the, uh, the most sensitive. And now we get a trip situation. So just a little warning to people that aren't familiar with these, as I am obviously not, <coughs> is if you get a chance to select your sensitivity, try the, the finest first, unless you get nuisance trips, uh, because obviously that's the safest, and just make sure that you've got the right buttons pressed, and that you've got a light showing against your sensitivity, so that you know that it's actually operational. Good day everyone, my latest Lazada purchase has arrived now. This is a box of Wagos, or Wagos, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. W-A-G-O-S is the, the name of the um, brand, but I don't actually think these are branded. They probably come out of the same factory in China but they're certainly not branded with that name. So these are electrical connections. And the idea is that you put the two wires that are due to be connected in this double one, for example, in these holes here. And then within the body of the plastic, they're connected by metal strips and if you're not familiar with these, then the idea is that you open them. You open the little plastic latches like that, stick the wires in the hole, and then you clamp down. And I don't know if you can get that on camera, but the, the metal is spring-loaded, and when you close it, The metal springs up and effectively traps the wire between the plastic lug and it, the sprung-loaded metal and that keeps it secure and the theory is that you don't need to cover these with anything so as long as you get the depth of the wire correct so there's none exposed then um, that just sits wherever it is forevermore and it's not going to unravel like the the um, insulating tape that they often use here. That's what worries me about any connections anywhere here which are joined by insulating tape is that one day the tape will dry out and the bare wires, the live wires will be exposed and possibly could end up touching something. So this box I've got was quite cheap um, I think it was something like 300 baht, which is about 15 pounds, which I guess is about 11 or 12 dollars. And you get different size connections. You've got double ones, you've got triple ones, and you have got, what are they, five, what's five? Whatever that is, five. And of course, if you've only got four to join, you don't need to use all of the holes. So um, I got this because it was best value, really. You can buy them for a few baht each, but when you're talking about needing a lot, getting a big box like this seems to me sensible. So my next task is to 
rummage around in the consumer unit where there are four or five connections done in the traditional tie way of twist and insulate, twist and tape and I can move the camera around, I know for a fact because I've set, found one that in that light switch there is a twist and tape joint and there are loads up in the loft I've already seen. So, let's see what I can film with this venture. Gosh, my memory is bad. The um, connection I need to deal with is not in the light switch, it's in the power socket. Or behind the power socket. So I've turned the fuse off that controls this circuit. But I am going to just check that there's no power running through to it. Nothing's lighting up there. Let's check it again. Right. So this is the this is the connection here. This is the one where you can see the bare wires, they've wrapped it, but you can still see the bare wires because they haven't covered the end properly. Just check that again. Okay. I have to say it's very neat. It's a very neat twist. There's not an issue with the way the wires connect themselves. It's just the fact that they're not really protected long term because they're wrapped in something that can dry out and unravel. But the actual way they've wrap these wires together is extremely neat and they're very very tight I don't know if they use a machine or just a pair of pliers but now I'm impressed didn't work. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? Uh -uh. Maybe it needs a bit more wire. A bit more straight wire exposed.
still not catching. So what I've found is you need to have quite a long piece of wire to go into these connectors. Of course, it's got to be straight. It's no good having it all twisted up like it was when they were together. So because that wire's got to go right to the back of the connector like that. Obviously you don't want any of the insulation to catch. There you go. Give it the tug test. That's it. Nice proper little connection. And of course they're reusable, so if you ever needed to do anything like add another wire into your circuit, you can add another wire and then just change the connector for a three a three wired connector. And that can just tuck at the back there. No need to wrap it with anything. While I'm here, I'm going to trim these because they've all got little bits of wire exposed, as you can see. So while I'm in this socket, I'm going to just trim these slightly shorter so they fit better. Okay, that's all sorted out now, so I'm happy that those wires are a long-term bet. Now, at the suggestion of one of my subscribers, I bought myself a very inexpensive socket tester, which will do various um, tests automatically to check that the wiring is correct inside there. Uh, and it'll also do an RCD test, so you press a button and it deliberately shorts itself in, in its circuitry uh, to make sure that your RCD will trip. And it's been very interesting using this because I used it at my condo and I discovered that an extension lead that I had in there, which I wired up, had the live and neutral reversed. So um, that was useful to be able to take that apart and actually wire it up correctly. I'm not sure how it happened other than I think the colour coding of the the wires got to me. Anyway, I've had a very interesting experience with this here actually. Um, let me take you to the to the consumer unit first of all. Now this consumer unit has got a built-in RCBO which protects all the circuits in one go. Uh, not the favourite way of wiring. In the UK that would be every single one of these switches would be an RCBO um, or at least there'd be an RCBO covering say the upstairs and the downstairs or the lighting circuit or, or separate parts of the um, circuitry anyway that's an aside uh, this one has got a sensitivity choice 
Uh, I don't know if you can make that out, but um, it's got 30 milliamps on the right hand side, which is the red light. Then it's got 10 milliamps, which is the blue light. And it's got 6 milliamps, which is an orange light. And I think the minimum sensitivity that's recommended is 30 milliamps. That will protect you from electric shock. But it does go better than that. And so I've chosen to put it on 6 milliamps, which is the most sensitive. Now, that has a disadvantage because if there was anything that was sensitive to... Um, I'm going to use terms that aren't electrical terms now, but if it's got something inside it that makes the makes it spark or short circuit or something like that, um, then you're likely to get trips that are false. So uh, putting on a very sensitive setting can be a problem. And obviously, the more sensitive it is, the more likely it is to go off as soon as there's any little issue, even if that issue isn't technically a shock hazard. So I had it on 6 milliamps and that's where it is now. Now we go back to this tester because I got myself in a right old tiz the other day when I started to use this. Let's turn it on first of all. Okay so, so that's the sort of um, the opening screen if you like. And I've got to turn this upside down to actually get it in the socket because, as you can see, the the actual um, earth pin, the round earth pin, is at the bottom, and on my sockets here, it's at the top. So I've got to turn it upside down. But let's see what happens now. Now I don't know if you heard that, but basically, me plugging that in has caused the RCD to trip so that's tripped if I turn it back on now it won't let me do it so I brought this along yesterday I thought when I put it into this socket I thought Oh my God, the wiring's not correct. So I went and tested another socket. Let's turn it back on. That's on six milliamps. I went to do another socket. Same thing happened. I went around the whole of this place and it happened with every single socket. And I really thought, oh my God, he's got something connected up wrong in the, in the roof that's, uh, that it's detecting and causing it to trip. And there's no way I'm going to be able to find it. And then I remembered about the sensitivity. So I then put it onto 30, which is the red light. And I tried again. Nothing wrong with that now. So you see, I don't know how this is internally wired and how it does its checks. But one thing I do know is that on the maximum sensitivity of 6 milliamps, this trips the consumer unit every time but when it's on 30 milliamps it doesn't so then I was able to go around the whole place and check each socket to make sure it's just got these two two lights here and the word correct is showing on the screen although obviously it's upside down it also gives you the voltage which I thought in Thailand was 220 volts, but I was then told by Suntere that she thought it was 230 volts. Um, interestingly enough, this is showing under 220, whereas in my condo in Jean Thierme or Patia, it was showing um, 
230, I think. Anyway, I tried this the other night when we were doing a little bit of cooking and it was night time, so I guess there's quite a lot of draw on the power grid from the village. And it was only showing 200 volts or just slightly less. So it just shows that when you're out in the sticks a bit, you can be a bit vulnerable to voltage drop as people turn on their appliances. So anyway, um, it will tell you what the problem is if there is a problem along this side here where I'm running my finger now. It will give you the voltage and there's a button there for the RCD testing. And it comes with an instruction leaflet as well in English. And this thing cost me about 100 and... Mm, I think it was around 160 baht plus postage brings it up to near enough 200 baht which is about £10, so that's really nothing, is it, to make sure that you're safe. And it occurs to me that it's a good idea that when we go away somewhere that I just take it with me. So if we're staying in a hotel or, or anywhere, really, I can just pop this in and test the socket is correctly wired. And if it isn't, not only can I bring it to the attention of the hotel, but I can avoid using that socket just in case there's a problem there that could lead to a problem in the night with a fire or us getting electrocuted. Yeah, very nice little bit of kit. Thank you very much to Ray who suggested that I get this um, as a very minimum. I appreciate that suggestion. Now the next thing I want to do is to actually tidy up inside here because we've got lots of these connections as you can see which I'm not very happy about, especially as they're actually in the consumer unit itself. So I'm going to do this next because obviously it's accessible and I'll, I'll leave the loft stuff until later on because I need to get some sort of boarding or a ladder or something so I can, I can sit comfortably near a box whilst I'm messing about with the wires. So I've turned the power off here, which means that in theory everything is off after those two big wires that I'm pointing out there which are the the power in tails so I will test everything as I go just to make sure and I hopefully I can get this tidied up and it will it will be a little bit safer and I'll be a little feel a little bit more comfortable with it the other thing I want to do is where I see a, an exposed wire like there on the neutral bar and here on the feed I want to just trim those down and get them inserted so there's no wires showing at all just to give me more comfort that that's being done in accordance with what I consider to be um, decent UK regulations uh, it just gives, it's just a little bit of tidying up and it just any exposed wire I think is probably not a safe. So um, that's what I'm going to aim to do. Wow, I've actually discovered there are seven twist and tape joints in this box, which is... Well, there's only eight... There's only eight breakers. So that means they just didn't leave enough wire sticking out at all any of the circuits. A bit disappointing but it is what it is. Um, I just stopped here to show you these two taped joints. You see it's, it's the same as the, the one that was behind the socket that I did earlier. No doubt they were squashed down together so they were closed but it's only been you know, two months or so since they've been put in and, and the ends opened up so you know that's totally vulnerable to something getting in there um, or indeed for this tape to start peeling and, and this has started peeling actually you know that's actually not stuck down at the end and this is going the same way the other ones were okay but um, these are two examples of and the thing is they're live wires they're the ones that are actually feeding the circuit so if those were to be exposed, you know, they could conceivably 
they could touch uh, the earth or each other or um, indeed if something was to get in there a beetle or something that manages to get into this box which is not impossible because they're not exactly watertight as it were uh, you could have a short circuit because a little spider or a beetle has got in there so I think I'm doing the right thing actually I've tidied up this edge here a little bit um, basically there's not as much exposed wire now this might be half a millimetre or one yeah half a millimetre on a couple of them so I'm getting there yes my freshly clean floor looking a bit worse for wear okay I've done my bit no wire showing now the seven joints are done so now the moment of truth is to turn the power back on and do some checks make sure I don't get any tripping <laughs> 